Hey everybody, I'm Eric Wagner, and in this video, I want to talk about time and how we can work with it in our GIS data. When most people think about GIS data, they usually think about the geography, the location, where something took place. And as GIS analysts, we like to think that everything happens somewhere. But the reality is, is that we could probably also make the argument that everything happens at some point in time as well. Now, my goal is not to get philosophical about this, but when we take a look at that time or date data that maybe you have with your data, that's such a powerful way by which you can go about visualizing your information on a map that is many times, frankly, overlooked. So there's gonna be all kinds of hardcore analyses that you can do out there with uh, time data, like space-time cubes. Uh, not even worrying about the fancy analytics like that, but just, again, simple analytics is what this video is about. So let's say you were using an application out in the field for a water utility like Field Maps or Survey123, where people are recording uh, point locations and they also have a date field that they fill out for when this phenomenon took place. Well, we can use that date time to visualize the data, as I've been mentioning. So let's go ahead and take a look in how we can visualize our data in both ArcGIS Online as well as in ArcGIS Pro with those time and date fields. And here we are. And in our case here, I have a hosted feature layer. And if we dive into it, we'll see that it has two layers. Uh, one of them here is the distribution mains. That's really just going to be for reference later on. Um, and, and here I actually have a point layer of water main breaks. And if I dive inside of it and go into the attribute table within the data tab, we can see here that I have a field called leak date and our dates and times have been stored. If I go a little bit deeper, I just want to highlight one point here and that, that is that this is an official date field. This is not a string or a text field uh, where someone would have manually typed in 1 slash 9 slash 2018 comma, etc. Uh, this is an official date field because we need a date field to work with the date tools. So I'm going to go back into the overview tab. And for any sublayer that we have that has an official date field, we need to enable that time to do some of these time visualizations. So if I come down here to the lower right hand corner, we can see under time settings, it's set to not enabled. If I click on the pencil, I can enable this. And there's two ways that I can enable time. And that is, does something happen at a specific point in time and that's it? Or does it occur over a specific span? So in some cases, a utility might just record the date and time that the leak was recorded, and that's all. Great, I have that here. Or maybe there's something like a water outage where there's a start time and an end time where we can show our data as a span. So depending upon how many date fields you have and how you want to visualize your data, you're going to be able to do that with the ArcGIS system. So we'll enable the time for a specific point in time. I can choose my field of interest, that leak date field that we just saw, and I'll press OK. So now that it's been enabled, we can begin to explore our data using, using time visualizations. So we'll start in ArcGIS Pro. And here's that mains layer as our reference. And I'm able to access my water main breaks from ArcGIS Online within ArcGIS Pro by dragging and dropping. And as you can see here, I've just got this giant mess of points. It tells me I have a lot of leaks in this case, but it doesn't necessarily tell me how they've occurred over time. But I can tell that if I double click on my layer, and go into the time tab, we can see that time has been enabled because we just turned that on within ArcGIS Online. And because of that, the visualization that we want to look at, again, taking a look at our data over time, is going to be possible to us. And if I go up to the upper right-hand corner of the map, we can actually see that I have this time slider here that shows me from the earliest date to the latest date. And anything inside of these kind of brackets here is what's visualized on the map. So I'm going to drag this back to the left hand side and we can see that this is what our data looked like as of uh, July 30th, 2011. And if I slowly move this over to the right, we, begin, we can begin to see those points uh, start to increase over time. Or if I leave it to the left and just simply press the play button, we can see them start to appear. Now, this is great if I just want to see points, but what if I want to maybe understand my data a little bit better? Other visualization tools can help us out. And here's a little trick, that if you have a layer selected and you press and hold the control button and drag, you can actually create a copy of that layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bottom layer from my water main breaks and I'm going to go into the appearance tab and click on symbology. And instead of just showing this as single symbol points, I'm going to show it as a heat map. 
not particularly exciting, but just in the same way that we saw those points grow earlier, we can also have the heat map grow with it. Now, I'm not gonna press the play button just quite yet because I wanna show that there's also a time tab up here as well because we are currently working with time data and I can choose how fast or how slow the visual visualization progresses. So we'll press the play button here and we can actually begin to, again, see these points slowly start to grow and where these hot spots emerge over time. Again, nothing particularly earth shattering here, but if you have that date data, you can begin to use it to watch your data grow. Now, something else you could do if you want is aside from watching data grow progressively, that is to say from a fixed start point onward, we can also have this work as maybe like a window. So if you wanted to, you can, you know, we'll unlock maybe the, the start point here and the end point. And now by clicking and dragging, we can actually move that window along. So if you want to understand what your data looks like within particular time slices or windows, we can do that as well within our ArcGIS Pro environment. So as long as you have that date or time field, you can really start to do a lot. Now, this is great if we're working in the desktop environment, but we can also make this accessible in the web environment as well. So let's go jump back into ArcGIS Online. And so here we are at our layers, but I already have a map built out for us. And so we have those two layers. And since I enabled time, what I need to do is I need to actually refresh the map so we can absorb those changes. And what you'll notice now is down along the bottom of the screen, I actually have a very similar time slider. And how did that get there? Well, if I take a look at the water main breaks layer and click on the more options, the dot, 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 we can now see we have the ability to enable or disable time animation within this particular web map. So what can I do with this? Well, I can press the play button here. And again, we get that little uh, window time slider. Uh, we can also view our data progressively if we wanted to. And also, I can update some of the settings here within the web map and configure this, such as what speed is it going to take place at, faster or slower. Or I can go into advanced options and take a deeper dive into it. So if I wanted my data to only show that current time interval, that time window, or if I wanted to progressively show the data over time, or maybe how many time steps I want to break it out into, or what's the length of one time interval? How fast is the data going to appear? So if I want to make this be something like one month, I can actually make those windows be uh, a lot smaller. And with those new settings in place, I can press the play button and slowly watch this grow one month at a time, two months at a time, a year at a time, whatever you want. Now, I'll press the pause button here to kind of lock that in place and we'll save these edits. Now, this was done within the web map uh, viewer here. Now, this might not be what you wanna share with people across the organizations. Well, that's where web applications can come in handy, uh, in particular, web app builder in this case. So I'll go ahead, I'll open up a tab here that has web app builder in it. And since I've enabled time, just like before, and also made some changes to the underlying web map that's being used here. I'll refresh Web App Builder to pull in those changes. So I've got my two layers on the map. I got my mains, I've got my main breaks with the date and time, but the time slider functionality is not yet enabled within this uh, configurable application. Well, how do I do that? Well, if I go into the widget button here up at the top, I can add in a widget for the purposes of viewing that time slider. And so I'll click on the one button here. We can see all these different widgets. And in the event you've never taken the time to look at some of these uh, widgets within Web App Builder, I really recommend you give them uh, a little bit of time because there's really a lot you can do here. And they're all done without a single line of code as we're about to see. So I want to add the time slider element in particular. So I'll click on it and press OK. And now it's just going to ask me some simple questions about how I want this thing to work. So first and foremost, do I want to honor the time settings uh, that is to say my options down here from the web map or if I wanted to I could actually override them within web app builder by clicking on the little gear icon and choose what my different intervals look like or whatnot. I'll honor the time settings from my original web map. Uh, do I want to make it that when someone uh, starts working with this uh, widget that the time slider automatically starts playing or do they have to manually press the play button? Uh, does it automatically loop that when it gets to the end it goes back to the beginning? Uh, do I want to display the layer names or what do I want the date and time format to look like? You have the ability to control what this is going to look like for the end user at your organization. But once you're happy with the settings, you can press OK. 
Make sure you press the Save button in the lower left-hand corner. And then if you want to, you can go ahead, you could launch Web App Builder. And we'll be able to see here now in Web App Builder that we have the Time Slider widget. So I can click on this. And now down at the bottom, we'll see that we have the Time Slider that now people can begin to work with. Someone can manually start to drag this along, see the points, or if they wanted to, they could even crank up the speed a little bit to make this go a little bit faster. And something else here that's also worth mentioning is just in the same way that we had the uh, hotspots appear within ArcGIS Pro, we could also do that within uh, the web map as well. So I'm going to hop back into the original map that powers all of this. I'll go into the water main breaks. I'll just copy this layer, move it underneath, and for my visualization, I'll choose heat map, press done, and now we'll be able to, again, within our web environment this time, watch this heat map grow. So I'll save my changes in the web map, which will then carry through into Web App Builder. So I'll refresh my Web App Builder. And again, it's showing all the data, but if I turn on the time slider, we can now come in here and begin to watch those leaks appear on the map, as well as have those hot spots start to grow uh, for end users to take a look at. So this is meant to be an overview of how we can take time data that you have and effectively visualize it. We, we were able to do that by first recognizing that we had a date field and enabling time settings. Uh, but then also we were able to explore it a little bit further within ArcGIS Pro, as well as within web maps and web applications that you can then share across your organization. So I hope that this is another good yet simple way that you can start to visualize and take a look at the data at your organization or utility. And as always, thanks for watching.